The word populism is frequently thrown around in politics today. It's often used to describe the right and especially the MAGA movement, but populism isn't a partisan term, and there are certainly populists on the left as well. And we have journalist and best-selling author Joshua Green in studio to discuss his new book, The Rebels, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and the struggle for a new American politics. Joshua, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks so much for having me. And so we really focus in this book on populism on the left, and yeah. you talk about the protagonists of this book becoming national icons. How so? Well, you know, I, I talk about the rise of these three populist politicians on the left because there really wasn't left-wing populism uh, popular in America before the financial crisis, crisis of 2008. And to me, that's the real starting point to this story. The backlash to that crisis ac across America uh, produced not only a, a, a right-wing brand of populism, which gave rise to, to Donald Trump and his presidency, but also a populism on the left that was really spearheaded by people like Warren, like Sanders, and now like Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, and the argument in the book kind of follows that history, follows the rise of this democratic movement, and how how it shaped and influenced the presidency of Joe Biden. And you really say that basically while uh, Sanders and Warren fell short of the White House, that uh, Biden has really become this unlikely champion of their vision. Yeah, you know, I spent 2020 following uh, both the presidential campaigns of Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders. And at the time, there was this great expectation that Democrats were going to nominate and elect a, a true left-wing populist to the White House. And there's a lot of disappointment when that didn't happen. Uh, and when Joe Biden, who historically has been a very business-friendly centrist Democrat, got the nomination, but Biden has really adopted and put into action a lot of the progressive policies that people like Warren and like Sanders uh, have been pushing for, and we're beginning to see the effect that that's had. He was elected during uh, the COVID economic crash, and you know today unemployment is down, stock market is up, uh, gas prices are falling. Uh, Biden's got a, a long way to go when it comes to political support and his polling numbers in November, but at least in terms of the economy, a lot of these policies have produced a great success. So you would say that he's adopted these policies not to his own peril, but really positive overall? As far as the economic ones, yeah. I mean, I spent a lot of time in this report, uh, book kind of reporting from across the country, like Midwestern industrial states in Pennsylvania, where they're you know, building new steel plants because of Biden's industrial policy and where unemployment is down. Uh, and the economic picture is brightening for the first time in a long time. Um, certainly you can see the effects on the ground and in, in, in the economic numbers and employment numbers and job numbers and that sort of thing. But, but it takes uh, a long time for this to filter through the economy. And I think especially into people's political consciousness, it's not, it's not clear out on these visits and reporting trips that voters are necessarily connecting their improved economic conditions to Joe Biden's presidency. And that's something he's going to have to do if he wants to win another term. When we look for this election, we're really already thinking about Iowa and New Hampshire. Yep. What are the, the populist talking points that you think will really be the most risky? And what do you think are the ones that are really going to hold? Well, I think for Donald Trump, uh, it's going to be a focus on the same right-wing cultural issues that got him elected in 2016, uh, focus on immigration, on trade, and China. There is some overlap there between Trump and Biden, between Republicans and Democrats, on issues like tariffs, on issues like taking a more hawkish stance toward China. But I think Biden's focus uh, really has to be on the improving economy, on the kitchen table issues that voters who, when they go into the polls thinking about who do I want to vote for, are going to think, does it feel to me like my job is secure, my retirement secure, my kids can go to college, they can find a job. I think in the end of the day, those are the kind of issues that most Americans vote on if they're undecided. And so for Joe Biden, I think it's really important to lean into this economic populist vision that I think he can justifiably lay claim to. Joshua Green, we thank you so much for your time. Congratulations already on the book success just one day old. We want to let our viewers know that his book, The Rebels, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and the struggle for a new American politics is now available wherever books are sold. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.